hit rock bottom Sitting on an old bar stool He paid my tab, put me in a cab He didn't have to He could see I was hurt Lord, I wish I'd got his name I didn't feel worth saving But he saved me just the same That day out on the water The fish just wouldn't bite I put my pole down and floated around It was just so quiet And I could hear my old man say your son just be still cause you can't find peace like this in a bottle or a pill and from a bar stool to that heaven room Sunday morning in a church pew in a deer stand over hay an interstate back to Nashville A Chevrolet with the windows down Me and him just riding around sometimes Whether I'm looking for him or not That's where I find God Sometimes late at night the sound of her heartbeat and the sound the crickets are singing and I don't know what they're saying ah. mm, but it sounds like a hymn to me and I ain't too good at praying ah. thanks for everything from a bar stool that heaven room Sunday morning in a church pew in a deer stand or a hay field an interstate back to Nashville a Chevrolet with the windows down me and him just riding around sometimes whether I'm looking for him or not that's where I find God From a bar stool to that heaven room Sunday morning in a church pew In a deer stand or a hay field And in a state back to Nashville A Chevrolet with the windows down Me and him just riding around Talking, just talking. I do that a lot. Yo, I do that a lot. Cause that's where we find God. Shackled by a heavy burden. Neath a load of guilt and shame Then the hand of Jesus touched me And now I am no longer the same Because he touched me Yeah Oh, he touched me, and all that joy that floods my soul. Something, Something happened, yeah. and now I know.
He cleansed and made me whole. Oh, I will never cease to praise Him. I'm gonna shout it while you turn it. I don't know if you really realize how thankful and blessed we are to have this much talent. I want to get you calmed down a little bit. An old man went to the, had a doctor's appointment at 8 o'clock. And he was a little late getting in to see the doctor, it wasn't his fault, he was there, but the doctors, you know, the doctors. Anyway, it was getting on towards nine o'clock and he was, he got up and he said, doctor, I've got to go. Said, my wife is in the hospital and I go see her every morning at nine o'clock, I've got to go. Doctor said, well, what's the matter with her? He said, she's got Alzheimer's. She doesn't even know who I am. The doctor said, well, why bother to go see her if she doesn't even know who you are? He said, because I still know who she is. Right. Two things that we know. Number one, we know, 1 Thessalonians 4 says, the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Amen. And we which are alive and remain will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Comfort one another with these words. We know Jesus is coming back. The second thing we know, Hebrews 9, 27, it is appointed unto man once to die. And after this, the judgment. Well, I just don't believe any of that. Well, wait a minute, which part do you not believe? Well, I don't believe that Jesus is coming back. Well, then you fit in with what the Apostle Peter said when he said in the last days there will be scoffers about the coming of the Lord. They will mock it and say, well, you've been preaching that all this time and it still hasn't happened. So which, which part do you not believe? Do you not believe that you're going to die? Well... You're not very bright. <laughs> We're all going to die. It seems to me today that people are more interested in 
where they came from, their ancestry, than they are interested in where they're going to go. Now, it's good to know where you came from, but it's more important to know where you're going. Where you came from, you've already been. Where you're going is still up to you to choose. Hebrews 9, 27, again, it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. Your death has been appointed. Now, we know if God tarries and Jesus doesn't come back soon, we're all going to die. Job said, Job, by the way, first book was, but was ever written. He says, life passes with the swiftness of the weaver's shuttle. It's gone. And the older you get, you look back and you wonder, where did it go? I've lived all these years. How did it go so fast? People say, well, the older you get, faster time goes. No, the older you get, the slower you go. <laughs> time doesn't speed up, you slow down. Our days pass with the swiftness of the weaver's shuttle. The psalmist said, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. And the Apostle James said, life is but a vapor. It appears for a little while, then it's gone. Vanishes away. Now we know that we all live, and we also know we're all going to die. But when you die, where do you go? See, scientists tell us that you cannot change you cannot create anything, and you cannot destroy matter. It's already here, and you can't destroy it. You can only change its form. You can take and put water in a pot and turn the fire on and turn it to steam, but the steam will come back into water. Every drop of water that has ever been is still here. You cannot change it. It's always there. Now, that's what science teaches us. You cannot create or destroy matter. But the Bible teaches something a little different. It says you cannot destroy human personality. You cannot destroy the soul of a person. You can change its residence from here to heaven or hell, but you can't destroy it. There was a time when you were not, but there will never again be a time when you will not be. You were born to spend eternity somewhere and when God breathed into you the breath of life, you became a living soul. Your soul, your spirit, is going to live forever somewhere. Now, if you're not a Christian, you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. You're only one heartbeat away from hell. One heartbeat. When that muscle that pumps blood through your body stops beating, you're dead. We all spent 180 days in the womb of our mother, preparing us to live 50, 60, 70, 80 years in this thing called time. 
but we live in time, however many years we've been appointed so that we can prepare to where we're going to spend eternity. Where is your soul going to live? That's what you're given time for. You were born to spend eternity somewhere. Now, Bible teaches when a Christian dies, he goes immediately into heaven, the presence of God, where he's going to spend forever. Time will cease to be. When the unsaved dies, he goes immediately to hell. Jesus talking about hell. You know, Jesus talked more about hell than he did about heaven. He said, if your hand offends you, will send you to hell, cut it off. He said, if your foot will offend you and cause you to go to hell, cut it off. He said, if your eye will offend you and cause you to go to hell, just pluck it out. Just reach up there and dig it out. He said, it's better to go through life halt, lame, and blind than it is to go to hell. That's what Jesus said. Now I only have one question today. Where are you going when you die? Have you made preparation for where you're going to spend eternity? Have you really accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Where are you going to spend eternity? How many were in the military? Let me see your hand. Were any of you ever in battle and had to write the letter, what they call the letter just in case? I never had to write that letter. I was spent time in the, in the military. I never had to write that letter. It was between the Korean War and Vietnam. I was in that period of time. The closest we got to warfare was the Cuban Missile Crisis. And we were prepared. We trained every day to be prepared when the time came, just in case. Where are you going to spend eternity? Just in case. <laughs>